and this is the best way to handle it. This isn't about holding a line. These things don't stop. They spread. It is almost 3.30 a.m. I decided to just check a couple of things before I went to bed, and uh, Runway had released Act 1. I wanted to give it a very quick test uh, using this footage that I had used in Viggle and in some other experiments. And I wanted to put together this quick video of what my findings are. So they do have quite a few suggestions of what works and what doesn't work on the Runway help page. And it's really important to look at that. And I think it explains why, if you saw any of those previous videos they made, the actors were sitting very still and uh, against a plain background. The plain background, as far as I can tell, doesn't really matter so much, but movement really plays a part uh, in whether the clip will work or not. Not whether it'll even start to do the clip. So when I performed these two characters, I did have quite a bit of body motion, even though it's not anything big or drastic. Uh, there is movement in the shoulders and moving back and forth. And what I found is that when I would put some of those bigger movements into runway, it would say it couldn't recognize a human face. What I think it's saying is that it's not stable and simple enough for Act 1 to deal with. So I used this clip sort of from the middle where I was a little more still, and uh, this is the results. We hold the line, reinforce the defenses. These things, they're not the first enemy I've faced. This isn't about holding a line. These things don't stop. They spread faster than we can react. We need to hit them now before there's no one left to save. So this came out really great. And I think one of the advantages of this is that you can really compose your image. Uh, in this case, I was using Runway to make my input images. And that way I was able to get the frame that I wanted out of the dozens and dozens of different tries of this character in a sci-fi background. Uh, this is the ones I was happy with. I was able to zoom out for some... Uh, some wider shots if that was necessary. It's really good. It's very, very good. It's very exciting. Uh, but I think the stiffness in the shoulders is going to get really boring if you're watching a lot of clips of this. So I think you're going to have to have some creative use of uh, how you put your scenes together to make this all work. Now, next up, I wanted to just do a test of what if I have a clip of my character talking in runway, and then I want them to do a big dramatic move. So in this case, I generated the bigger shot in Kling just to see how that would look together. And this is what it looks like with a little bit of a smooth cut blend. Now, if you don't know, smooth cut is a DaVinci Resolve transition that basically morphs the, the two images together. And generally, you could hide a lot of mistakes in that. Which brings me to another point. Uh, last week I had been testing Viggle out quite extensively. And at one point I said, hey, let's take this Viggle character, let's put it into Runway Gen 3 and get a clip out of it. Let's put the next portion of the clip into Gen 3 uh, with the same seed and see if the background and the character matches. And this was the results. Same prompt, same seed, but there are some variations between the two. So, in thinking of that, I wanted to see how Act 1 dealt with that. Line? These things don't stop. They spread faster than we can react. We need to hit them now. So you can see there was a bit of a jump in the middle when it switches the clips. And what I think is happening is that the second clip was starting on a sound, so the video generated with the mouth a little bit open, whereas it was getting quieter on the first clip, so the mouth closed. The way I think you can get around taking two clips and putting them right up together is to just generate an extra couple of overlapping frames between the two and use something like Smooth Cut to uh, just blend the two together. So what Act 1 is giving us is really a performance capture. It has its limitations, so you wouldn't be able to take an entire scene and put it through. You're probably going to get some problems with it at this stage at least. But seeing as it was performance capture and with all the cool tests I had done in Viggle in the last couple of weeks, I wanted to see side by side, let's take the same input clip, the same reference images. So I'd never noticed this in Viggle before, but you can upload a background image rather than using the green screen or the original source. 
Uh, so what I did is I made a clean plate in Photoshop without the character in there. And then I set that as the background in Viggle with a shot of the character in the same background. And it blends really well. So let's take a look at Act 1 and Viggle side by side. This isn't about holding a line. These things don't stop. They spread faster than we can react. Still what we're seeing with, with Viggle is that uh, the frame rate isn't 100% there. You're getting sort of a flickering effect. Uh, and you're not getting detail in the body itself. With Act 1, you're getting really nice quality, but you're really limited in how much motion you can have. And that's not to say that Viggle doesn't have some motion problems, like sometimes a big movement will just vanish a limb. Uh, if you want to have a character turn around, it doesn't always work well. Here's a little stress test I wanted to do, so just big facial expressions, and this is what it looked like in Act 1. So it's not getting some of the full expressions that I'm getting, but it's getting pretty close. And here's one side by side with Viggle. The Spain in Maine falls mainly in the Spain. And something like this, Viggle is a little bit weaker. It doesn't really get the full detail of the facial expressions, but still you can see more movement in general in Viggle than in Act 1. So I think Act 1 has really brought sort of a performance capture level up in the uh, facial performances. And hopefully Viggle can sort out some of these little technical issues like the flickering and sort of the, the low res body. If we can use Act 1 and we can use Gen 3 or Kling or Minimax in combination with Viggle and put all these things together, this all feels really close to be able to just getting an actor or two with a camera and making a big budget looking movie for very little money, uh, just shooting it on your cell phone. And that is amazing.